Good afternoon and welcome to Birmingham Joined Up. When uh, we thought that we could have a conference this year, um, we, were, um, we were excited. It had gone out of our thinking that we would physically be able to have a conference and, uh, and then with um, all that was not decided in Birmingham, we weren't expecting a conference. So it's an absolute thrill, a delight, um, but at very short notice, that we're welcoming you here this afternoon. Um, I am thrilled that we've got an afternoon which is going to give Birmingham school leaders the chance for some, uh, some joining up. Uh, it would be great if we were all in one place physically, um, but there are advantages to being virtual. And the advantages are that we've had huge sign up for today's event. And we know that some people will also uh, watch this as a recording later on. Uh, but for now, um, I just, um, it, it falls to me to say that um, this is a real opportunity for heads to hear directly from key people in the city and Birmingham City Council are our centre stage and we're delighted that Kevin Crompton and his team are going to be speaking to us at 2.30. Before then, we've got half an hour focused on the Commonwealth Games and then we have got our keynote speaker at 2 o'clock, John Blake. So it falls to me to open the conference by introducing to you um, Alton Brown, who was European and world champion in karate, his sport, um, British born, he has represented Jamaica internationally, um, but now he's significant to Birmingham because he is leading all of the strategic work for Commonwealth Games, Birmingham 2022, around young people and education. And with Alton is James Grinstead, who um, has been seconded from Sport Birmingham, so knows the city and many of you will know him. And I'm delighted that Alton and James are going to speak to us now and give us an overview and, and a, a, an insight into what's coming. As they do so, please feel free to use the chat facility and James will particularly um, draw your attention to that later on in the presentation. One of the great things about this format is that we can interact with all of you, and that's certainly the case in this session. So thank you for being here. We hope it's incredibly useful to you, and I hope that the long-awaited Commonwealth Games begins to be a concrete reality for you. Over to Alton and James. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Pleasure to be here with you all today. So as mentioned, my name is Alton Brown and I am the Head of Youth Programmes and Policy here at the Organising Committee for Birmingham 2022. So we're just gonna take you through a little bit of information around our youth programmes and more importantly, our learning programme. So just so you're aware, our learning programme is targeting young people and children from the ages of five to 25. So it's the first time that a Commonwealth Games has ever had a significant youth program of this nature and so we're extremely excited to be able to um, be in this position to share this opportunity and these opportunities with all of your young people. So just to start with and to say so both Birmingham and the wider Commonwealth both share the commonality of having young populations you know since being here speaking to teachers speaking to youth workers on the ground you don't have to go too far to really see the impact that COVID-19 has had on young people. And from our perspective, as an organizing committee for Birmingham 2022, we are in an extremely priv privileged position to be able to share this opportunity with young people to make sure that your young people are able to benefit from the games being here in the West Midlands. Next slide, please. So, so everybody is aware, as a youth engagement proposition, we are saying that our youth programmes will create opportunities where children and young people are empowered to participate, are facilitated to succeed, and are celebrated as leaders and change makers within their community. Next slide, please. So we have a dedicated team here at the organising committee, um, some of which are newly in place. So these are the individuals that are gonna be really driving forward on development of the programs which will work with your young people. We have James Grinstead, as, as has been mentioned, and we'll speak to you next, 
who is our school relationship manager and James joins us from Sport Birmingham and has an incredible wealth of experience within the community, particularly with young people in schools. We have a youth engagement manager called Adam Stokes and Adam joins us from Sport for Life and has a range of experience specifically focused on young people not in employment, education or training. Really, really excited to have his experience in the team. We also have a program delivery manager called Olivia O'Connell and she comes from Contact Theatre in Manchester, which for anyone who knows Contact knows that it's renowned for its work with young people, particularly around youth voice and advocacy, which is one of our strands that we're, we're quite passionate about and we'll be delivering through the programme. We have a youth programme coordinator called Jamal Otto, who joins us from Positive Youth Foundations in Coventry. So some great hands-on experience of supporting young people one-to-one. -one. Um, and then we have an administrator in Fiona Hutchinson, who joins us from a local Birmingham school, um, but who also has a background in creative engagement through the arts and sport um, for Arsenal on projects at home within the UK, but also international. And then lastly, we have a secondi from Arts Connect. So that secondi um, has been gifted to us in order to support us to really broker opportunities for your young people to engage with the cultural festival. So Birmingham 2022 festival, which is the six month festival, which starts in March, 2022 and runs until August, but it will, it will feature a range of creative artists and professionals flooding the city with art and just really looking forward to be able to craft some opportunities for your young people through, through that aspect. Next slide, please. So as an overarching ambition, we are really looking to engage at least 1 million children and young people across the West Midlands. We really want to inspire the, and activate the dynamic voices of our children and young people. We're looking to offer opportunities for shared learning, really interested in what um, youth professionals within the education field can learn from youth practitioners out in the community and vice versa, and looking forward to really brokering some of those opportunities for those discussions to, to be had and that learning to be shared. We really want to ensure that there are pathways for young people that are furthest away from the game. So, you know, we've got a range of targeted projects that are looking to really bridge the gap and create pathways for young people to really be able to participate. So we'll do that by utilizing Birmingham 2022's games assets as a source of inspiration. So that is our cultural festival. That's our live sites, the, the huge screens that will pop up across the West Midlands, allowing for children, young people, families to really engage with and, and enjoy the sport. Um, we're looking to place sport, creativity and community celebration at the core of the program. We're collaborating with, with partner organizations, with young people and youth professionals. So again, we're not delivering all of this work ourselves, but we're looking to work with local and regional organizations to make sure that we have the impact and that there's a legacy off the, at the back end of this as well. And we're also delivering engagement activity for children and young people that just provides multiple pathways in for those young people to engage. Next slide, please. So when you look at the program as a whole, it, the program is split into three separate strands. So the first is schools engagement and learning activities. So that is all of our engagement with children, with young people and with teachers from reception age five up to key stage three, key stage four, sorry. We then have community youth participation activities, which is all of our outside education, grassroots community youth provision. So that's all engagement with children and young people out there in the community through youth clubs, sports clubs, et cetera. And then in our final strand, we have youth voice and advocacy activities. So that really is us amplifying children and young people's voices, looking for opportunities for those voices to be heard right across the program, whether that's through our podcast program, whether that's through a creative piece of filmmaking, which makes its way onto our live site screens out in the public realm, whether that's engaging in social action campaigns tied into some of the suppliers of the games, but looking for opportunities across all of those strands for young people's voices to be heard. Next slide, please. So just so you're aware, in terms of how we're approaching our engagement, if you look at this pyramid, at the bottom of the pyramid, we have our core offer for everyone. So that is predominantly our digital assets. So all of our educational resources, which we are providing, we are creating um, right throughout the key stages. That is open to everyone. It will be downloadable and readily available from our dedicated website, which will launch in January for teachers and youth workers to be able to sign up and actually access those materials. 
when you go up a little bit higher, looking at the time specific programs for key groups or mass engagement activities, that really is your one off opportunities for young people to engage in a creative engagement workshop, whether that's physical, that's sport, or whether that's the creative arts. Those are opportunities for young people to come together and participate in mass participation moments when we're allowed to do so, of course, through school festival days. So we're quite keen to get our young people together. Um, just from spending time on the ground with young people, that very much seems to be the thing that they're missing the most, is that opportunity to come together, to learn from each other and to work with each other. So then at the top of the pyramid is all of our targeted activities. So our targeted intensive programs, and those are more um, linked to programs such as working with young people that are not in employment, education or training. We've got specific programs which are um, grant funded by us, um, but delivered by Birmingham Children's Trust, for example, for young people within the care system or young care leavers and their families. We also have some targeted activity taking place around Birmingham Connect um, and Commonwealth Connections, which are both programs which I know um, Tim will speak more about a little bit later on. But that is just how we're focusing our engagement targeting. Next slide, please. And at this point, I will hand over to my colleague, James, who will take you through the timeline and what that activity look like, looks like. And just before I go, just to say that James will be asking you a few questions at the back end of this. So please do be ready to um, add some um, comments into the chat. Thank you. Thanks, Alton. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I just want to um, narrow it down now a bit. Obviously, Alton's given an overview of the youth programmes and our, our aims and ambitions for the next year, but um, obviously conscious that everyone is always keen to learn more of the specifics as well about how obviously your schools and how your young people can, can get engaged and, and can benefit from the games. So, so this is just a, a fairly simple timeline of currently where we are at the sort of a programme soft launch. So we're currently soft launching our programme with some resources, some projects already up and running, um, and, and obviously similar to this, a lot more visibility now that um, we've got a, a team fully fully emerged um, over the last few weeks. So, so speaking to schools, speaking to head teachers um, and, and getting the message out there really about how, how schools and young people can get involved um, throughout the next next year or so. So but now until December is soft launch. And like I said, there will be some resources coming down the line. There'll be some activities and some opportunities for engagement. And then we've really got a, an official launch at the start of January where we'll be launching our youth programme brand um, and launching the, the key elements of the programme and, and more information and more resources about what will be what will be available to schools throughout the spring and the summer terms. Um, all, all the way really leading up to, to our games time engagement in, in July, August next year, where, where we're hoping that obviously young people, children and young people across the city can be front and centre of a number of opportunities. Um, that will come down the line um, as part of the programme delivery. And then also not forgetting September next year onwards, we're, we're wanting to make sure that there is a lasting impact and, and all of the great work that, that we'll do over the next 10 months now um, can really lead into something longer term and, and lasting, which, which as Alton has just mentioned, is something that we want to start sort of getting feelings and, and thoughts from yourselves on, on what that looks like and how we can make sure that there is a positive, real long-term impact on, on the city and on the schools within the city. Um, so there's three um, main campaigns um, that run across those, those months. So theme one being Journey to the Games. So this is very much about involving children and young people in the games, giving them an understanding of what the games are, what the countries are, what the Commonwealth is all about, how, um, how the games came to be, what the specifics about this 20, 22 games are and how it maybe differs from, from previous Commonwealth games. Um, theme two is, is around um, entitled Finding Common Ground. So this is very much around connecting, finding similarities and differences amongst children. A couple of the projects that were mentioned earlier around Commonwealth Connections and Birmingham Connect really put onto this theme around celebrating the, the similarities and, and also celebrating those differences between between young people locally in Birmingham and the West Midlands, but also across, across the Commonwealth um, and theme free um, being We Can Change Our World, which is very much looking at how we make young people into the change makers of today and tomorrow, um, looking at some social action projects um, and how we can improve the youth advocacy that is, that is uh, around across the city. 
Um, so, so all of the all of the work, all of the learning program will follow these three themes throughout, um, and will sort of quite quite nicely lead from one to the other as as the time progresses towards game time. Um, so, what I've got on the on the screen now is just um, an overview of some of the the opportunities that in green are, are currently out there and currently on offer to, to schools and to young people. Um, and then in blue, some of the ones that are that are coming down the line um, as part of that program. So just to give you a feel for, for some of the opportunities that are out there. Um, and these, these are a mix of, of opportunities that will be delivered directly by ourselves at Birmingham 2022 with the learning program. Um, some that have been funded by ourselves and maybe being delivered by external partners. Um, and and then also some that will be using our our brand and, and the games to enhance programs and activities and initiatives that are already active in the city and across the region, but but to amplify those and enhance them further. Um, so hopefully, as you can see, a, a large number of opportunities coming coming down the line, and I, I won't go into detail on all of them because um, it, a it'll take a long time, but also some of the the more concrete details are still being being drawn up um but what i what i do want to do is just touch on a few um so the, the perry mascot visits and assemblies um are currently live and um and we, we're taking applications from primary schools all across the city um for them to apply to have perry to come to the school and um, there is a web link which is which is on the screen um for you to do that i think Last fall, there, there has been an, in, an inundation of, of schools, not surprisingly, wanting Perry to come along. Um, I think it's nearly 500 schools have, have applied across the, the wider West Midlands region. So it shows there's a real appetite for, for schools and for young people to, in, to engage within the games. But that's an opportunity that if you haven't already applied, then please please visit that website. And, and if you're a primary school and, and put your name down on that list, there'll also be other opportunities where Perry will look to visit events and big schools festival days etc so i um, very much looking to make sure that, that he and the, the mascot and the, the message that, that he brings with him is, is visible across across many different settings and um, commonwealth connections program i'm not again i'm not going to go into loads of detail on this because i think tim is is picking up on this following our our section but this is one of the projects that we funded um from from ourselves and, and is very much around twinning schools within the west midlands with different schools around the Commonwealth and looking to celebrate those, those similarities and differences that exist. And um, the digital resources and learning activities, this is this is going to be one of our major, major aspects of the schools program. Um, there will be some resources coming out in the next week or so that are linked to the launch of the Queen's Baton Relay, which is which is happening later this week. So these will be our first resources that are available for schools and teach uh, staff to use within the curriculum or within school time or to use as, as homework activities or, or, or break time activities for young people. So these will be, like I said, the, the first set will, will be coming out in the next couple of weeks and then they'll be sort of delivered to schools um, at, at different points throughout the year um, at, at sort of appropriate times um, with, with a, a, an additional set of resources coming in January following our, our official launch then. Um, there's a learning program open call, which, which again, we're, we're pulling together some of the details of what that looks like now, but this will be an opportunity coming down probably towards the back end of this year, or again, early in 2022 for schools to apply for funding to, to creatively respond to our youth program and our strategic aims that Alton mentioned earlier, that there'll be the opportunity for schools and, and I think one thing we're really keen on this is that it, it, it's led by the young people, by the students within schools, really, really looking at what they can do within their school community or within the wider community and um, to, to really put themselves front and centre of some positive opportunities and positive social action um, that, that they can do. So, so again, all of this information we'll share with you, but, but something to maybe prep your, prep your students for that, that is coming down the line. Um, and then lastly, young people inspirational moments. This is obviously a really important part of it. Um, and, and we're hopeful there will be many of these coming down the line over the next 10, 10 to 12 months where young people from Birmingham can, can get directly involved in Birmingham 2022. Um, and I mentioned the Queen's Baton Relay on Thursday. Mm -hmm. We've got 75 young people from, from Birmingham, aged 14 to 14 to 19, going down um, 
to be flag bearers at Buckingham Palace for the launch of the Queen's Baton Reel on Thursday morning. Um, I think coming from about 15, 16 different schools across the city. Um, so again, that's that's sort of the first opportunity for young people to get directly involved in what will, I'm sure, be a very inspirational uh, opportunity for those young people. Um, but, but again, we're, we're very keen and we're, we're confident across the learning programme that there'll be many more of those moments that will that'll come down the line as part of the, the, the programme over the next, next number of months. And I guess, yeah, just to just to finish, and as Alton sort of teed up earlier, um, so I, I think what we're hoping for is that this academic year 2021-22 will be filled with many inspirational moments, engagement opportunities, inspiring young people and schools to, to be involved in the games and, and get the benefits from obviously the games taking place in our city. Um, but we're very keen and, and I'm very passionate myself of, of making sure that while, while the next year will be really busy, really exciting and really impactful, um, that, that the, the lasting impact of the games goes beyond this current academic year and, and into 2022-23, but also into the next five, ten years. Um, so I guess a couple of questions that if, if you've got answers or, or responses directly now, you can pop them in the chat and, and it'd be great for us to get a feel for, for what the what the ideas are out there. But I'm very keen to understand from, from schools across Birmingham is, is what do you see as a lasting impact for schools? Um, and how can we make sure that there is a positive impact from the games that, that really supports your school, your pupils over, over the next two, three, four, five years? Um, so if there is any priorities that have sort of come to mind straight away that, you, that you've got, please pop them in that chat box and we can we can um, take those out and, and start using that as part of our ongoing planning. Um, or, or alternatively, if you if you did want to sort of follow up directly with us via, via email to follow up on any discussions or, or ask any further questions, then, then we've got a dedicated youth at birmingham2022.com email address um, that is monitored and managed by, by the, 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 the members of the team. So please do, please do start those conversations and um, yeah, hopefully we can we can work together to, to make sure that it is a really inspirational and, and momentous occasion for schools and for young people in, in the city. Thank you very much. Thank you, James, and thank you, Alton, for that. Um, great to, to meet you and to put faces to names and to see some of the exciting things that are planned up ahead. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Tim Boys, and I'm the Chief of Tech of Birmingham Education Partnership, and we are one of those delivery partners. And so we are really thrilled to be part of, of two different projects. And, um, and what I wanted to do was just follow on very quickly. The pattern of today is going to be hearing from key people centrally, leading in areas, um, and then we're aiming to root that or earth that in a little bit of something concrete um, coming out through there. So um, I don't know whether, uh, Danitha, you can put the next slide up, um, but there are two very particular projects that are up and running already um, that James mentioned. One is Commonwealth Connections, which is the project that we're leading with the British Council. And it uh, is, is one that uh, a lot of you applied to be part of. And um, we want to let you know that right now, um, this project is underway. It's an arts and sports project. The Youth Sports Trust are delivering the sport leadership element and the arts element is coming through the Birmingham Arts School. Uh, the countries that we are twinned with are, are listed here. So Zambia, Uganda, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, India, Sri Lanka, Jamaica, Trinidad, and Tobago, as well as Pakistan. And uh, what's significant is that there is a cluster already working at primary, secondary, and special schools in each of the big six secondary network areas in the city. Um, so somewhere not very far from you, Hansworth, Northfield, Billsley, King Standing, Highgate, actually Ladywood, Chelmsley Wood, they're, 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 they're stretched across several neighborhoods, but there will be a, a group of schools very near you involved in this. And our aim as Bet is to try and make sure that some of the benefits, some of the good things that come through this project reach a much wider number of schools. Um, and if we go on to the next slide, um, the, the second project 
um, is one that Birmingham City Council have been initiating and trying to, to pull together a, a lot of key partners. And we're now involved really at the, at the nuts and bolts end of writing schemes of work. So along with Birmingham City University, the Museum of the Art Gallery, Tide, um, but most of all yourselves, we have um, got a series of starting points, which include the themes listed here, Birmingham's heroes, female history for the females through the history of Birmingham, uh, changing role of women in the city, the shaping of the city, stories that tell and explain Birmingham's identity through the journeys that have shaped us. And um, it, it's easy for this to be a, a, a long, long list of, of distant ideas, but we're really conscious in, in the, the real world of schools now that if you're going to do meaningful and significant work in this, then there needs to be the right place and thinking shaping your curriculum planning for the summer term or maybe the spring term. And we're, we're very keen to help you with that. So there are schools already shaping some of these materials and we are working with, as we say, key partners to make some of this concrete. And in particular, I just wanna leave you with, with one particular idea that we're gonna have some workshops in the second half of this term, supporting you in primary and secondary schools in training young people to be young researchers so that we can build on the idea of um, young people systematically being skilled in learning the stories of parents and grandparents that sit in their communities, that sit in faith, community, faith communities around the city. And uh, alongside academics, we want to really systematize the skills needed for young people to begin with personal experience and move into formal and structured historical study. There's a huge amount happening and there are people in other universities around the country and other organizations who are developing materials and what we're aiming to do is to use um, a, um, a portal this term that means you can see that work shaping and as James and Alton have said all of that's going to be uploaded onto the Commonwealth Games website for launch in January um, but we want you to see what's coming and to get access to training that's going to support pedagogy and thinking in schools so that we can really make the most of this international opportunity coming to our city.